So as we get set here at center ice at the Whittemore Center, we will see the number two seed defending champion Wisconsin Badgers going up that number three seed, the Colgate Raiders, as these two get set for puck drop. And they will meet at center ice. Wisconsin, the home team, donning the white sweaters and Colgate in their maroon as the visitors today. And very early on, as we just mentioned, Kaylee Osborne out to play the puck as she rings it around the boards. And their head coach, Greg Fargo, saying that she has changed the way that they will recruit goaltenders because of how active she is with the puck. And, you know, you, we talked to the players, too. They said Hannah Murphy also handles the puck very well. They trust them both. But when you have a player that can start the breakout, it certainly lessens the load on the defenders heading back to the corner. Loose puck in the Badgers' end. And Kirsten Sims will send that one across ice to Casey O'Brien. She will drop it back for Caroline Harvey. Harvey puts it back up to the line for Layla Edwards. She'll float it towards the net just a little wide. And Wisconsin will go off for a change. Christina Kopinkova, she sends it ahead. Harvey back on it. USA's Hockey Female Player of the Year last year, winning not only a national title, and here we go, early penalty on the play, and it's coming up against Colgate. We went two and a half, almost full three periods in the first semifinal with no special teams, and Derek Craig takes the first one here. Watch right in the middle of your screen. It's a, you know, Again, it's like we saw in the first game. I think that's a pretty clean hit on Lacey Eden. But, you know, again, body checking not allowed, especially an open ice hit like that. Um, but good hit by her. She must have grown up playing boys hockey. So the Badgers are going to have an early power play opportunity. And you look, I mean, PK for uh, Colgate, they're third in the country. And they, have their, they do a really good job. Lots of confidence and a lot of help from their goal. Number 57, Eric Gregor. Kirsten Sims puts this one down below the goal line to Britta Curl. Back on the stick of Curl. Now she works it out looking for Sims, but an active stick. Sims will put it back to the blue line, but a vacant one, and no one's there. And Emma Pice, the first year on it. Shorthand, it gets the shot off on Ava McNaughton. Only 30 seconds gone in this power play opportunity for Wisconsin. They have 36 power play goals on the year, as you can see. Curl, cross ice. There's a quick shot on the far side, but didn't quite hit the net. So it was coming off the stick of Lacey Eden, who drew the penalty. We just talked about sort of acting and everything she does, and uh, scoring goals leads the team, but very active on that penalty kill right there. Great job in the first one. She broke up with her stick, and then she got the puck the length of the ice right there. Here comes Casey O'Brien. She puts it towards the net. Osborne with a bit of a kick save, and it's on the stick of Sims. She'll drop it back. Badgers continue to work this power play under a minute left with the extra attacker. Another shot on net. Osborne will lay out and cover it up. Good puck movement by Wisconsin. They're using the whole ice. They're coming around the horn and trying to switch the switch the ice going east to west and getting the players to try to shift and to find that open person. Obviously, excellent job by Kaylee Osborne to try to smother the puck and not allow the second chance opportunity. But see, it's Lacey Eden down there trying to walk out, create space to try to roof the puck. To the stick of Layla Edwards at the line. She has some time. She's being watched. She will send it low. Maddie Wheeler working away. Edwards comes in for support. Held in at the line by Vivian Jungles. But quickly, Daniel Sadakny will turn this one around for Colgate. 30 seconds left in this power play opportunity for the Badgers. Wheeler sends it across. Here comes Jungles. Jungles working her way in. She puts it out front, just out of reach, though, and it will clear the zone. 15 seconds left on the power play. Dar Greg waiting to get out of the box. And Osborne will hold on. With just five seconds remaining in the Badgers' power play. Hey, you can see Colgate, I mentioned they're third in the nation in terms of penalty kill percentage at 91%, uh, allowing nine power play goals against. That's, you know, it has to do with how many power plays, how many penalties they take, and uh, good on them early on. Get back. No coach likes to see special teams early on, even if you're on the power play, of course, unless you can score. They just want to get their legs out there. Get those first five, six, seven shifts in, especially in big games like this. 
And with that, Colgate has killed it. Successful. And the Badgers' power play is now 0 for 1 early into this contest. As we're just over three minutes in. Marianne Picard will check up. She slides it across. Shayla Edwards, one of the Edwards sisters in this game, will slide it towards the net. Her sister is Layla Edwards, who plays on the top line with O'Brien and Sims. Both natives of Cleveland, Ohio. Daniel Sadakny behind her own net. She'll put it across, and now it's back on her stick. Sadakny up the middle. She's being hounded. She gets taken down and neutralized. Safe play, and it will continue on. Sydney Bard will slide that over to Sydney Morrow. The dynamic defensive pairing for this Colgate team. Sydney Morrow, a transfer from Ohio State, has put up huge numbers, 39 points this year. On her stick now. She's going to tie for first for top defender in points. Along with Nicole Gosling and Haley Wynn, who we saw in the first semifinal for Clarkson. Badgers taking care of things in their own end, but there could have been a dangerous turnover. Alyssa Biederman throws this one towards the net. It's redirected down below the goal line. Badgers banging off the board. They'll get it out to neutralize, and they'll head off for a much need to change as Biederman is back in her own end, and she sends it ahead to Palumbo. Badgers aggressive here on the puck. Sims has it. She's working away with O'Brien. Layla Edwards below the goal line. She's being watched. Back to O'Brien. She gets taken down along the boards. Badger's body's flying everywhere right now. Colgate will spin this one the other way, and they'll need a change, so they'll make the safe play as they give Dump a chase. Back on is Caroline Harvey. Just over five minutes gone here in the first period. Few bodies go flying in that neutral ice, but this will be Sydney Morrow. She'll skate it in, gains the line, it's offside. Still looking for the game's first goal as we have the defending champion Badgers taking on the number three seed, Colgate Bears. The Wisconsin Badgers have seven national titles more than any other program, and a lot of it's to do with this man, their head coach, Mark Johnson, in his 21st season, the winningest coach, AJ, in UW history. Oh, man, look at that picture. I love it. <laughs> Uh, it, it is amazing what he's done. Took over uh, after they had been in existence for three years. Took over in 2002 and just took off. But national champion as a player, obviously, also part of that Miracle on Ice team. And so understated. Does not talk about it unless it's like pulling teeth to get him to talk about it. But he was the leading scorer on that 1980 gold medal team. Runs triathlon. He's run eight Ironmans. Run, swim, bike, whatever you say. But done. Completed eight Ironmans. He's uh, incredible. And he's in the IHF and the USA Hockey Hall of Fame. Well, let's head down to ice level and check in with Dana Boyle. One of my favorite stories that we learned this week about Mark Johnson was the players on his team. They said they sometimes forget how famous and how much of a legend he is because he is so humble and he has so much humility, likes to deflect, likes to talk about the team, and that's the guy you want leading your program. And he's clearly had a lot of success doing so. You know what's interesting about Mark Johnson, too, and he coached the 2010 women's Olympic team to a silver medal in Vancouver, the U.S. team, and he's a player's coach. He lets them play free. He always says he wants them to play downhill. He lives, gives them a lot of creativity, a lot of a long leash. Sydney Morrow floats that one towards the net. It couldn't get through the layers in front. Now on the stick of Greg. She's tripped up. Puck moved out to center line. Greg collects, sends it down to Sydney Bard. Greg will come in of support. Dar Greg, the sister of Ridley Greg, who plays for the Ottawa Senators. Her dad, Mark, is also a former NHLer, over 100 games, and now an amateur scout with the Philadelphia Flyers. So a lot of hockey running through that program, or through that family, I should say. It could <laughs> be like a program, program right? <laughs> like a program. I'm sure they had quite a program. Osborne out to play the puck. She will send it ahead on the stick of Sydney Morrow. She's checked off of it. Cross ice pops out to neutral. And so Daphne will survey. Emma Pice, the first year, the ECAC Rookie of the Year. 
She sends that in before she goes off for a change. Nearly seven minutes gone here in the first period. Our second semifinal of today. The winner punching their ticket to the national championship on Sunday. Where Ohio State is waiting as they defeated Clarkson by a score of 4-1 to one earlier today. At the line, Colgate holds it in. Christina Kultenkova trying to work ball low. Good passing by Colgate, but they're keeping it on the periphery. They're not able to penetrate, get inside, and get a shot. So that's just a lot of zone time and not very dangerous. Good work defensively by the Badgers. Pickering will send it back from Madeline Colombo. She puts it ahead, and it'll just be shoveled in by the Colgate player before she heads off for her change. Caitlin O'Donohoe, she puts it back for Sarah Stewart. Stewart with the shot. It goes high. And McNaughton may have gotten a little bit of a piece of it, but Maddie Wheeler speeding down the side. She's offside, so we'll bring the face off outside the blue line of Colgate. And for these Raiders in his 12th season, it is Greg Fargo at the helm. And, you know, Greg himself played college hockey, and he was a goalie, AJ, of all things. <laughs> and here he is, a head coach. Yeah, you know, he's, he's put together three consecutive 30-plus win seasons. He says he really, he, he likes being the underdog. And you mentioned it earlier in the Open, but he said they are really motivated to bring the first NCAA championship to Colgate in any sport. Colgate might be the number three seed here, but they really do feel like the underdog of the four teams. And one of the things that Sydney Bard, their defenseman, was saying to us is that everyone seems to be sleeping on us. But we'll see what they have here today as they take on the defending champion Badgers. Wisconsin works this one in. Sydney Bard is on it, now picked up by Sir Daphne. Sir Daphne, Tuesday, will head to Team Canada's camp as she prepares for the World Championship. And she will not be alone. There are so many players in this Frozen Four who are going to be heading to the World Championships or National Development Camps right after this Frozen Four and the champion is crowned. Yeah, the, the teams are coming together on Tuesday. Canada has already selected their roster, but 39 players are vying for the 25-person roster for Team USA, they get together in Lake Class Lake Placid on Tuesday and things will get underway in Utica, New York, hosted by USA Hockey. As the USA team looks to make it back to back gold medals. I'm even gonna say that as the Canadian me, it hurts me, but I will give them credit where credit is due. And here we go, off and running. This is Cassie Hall, the first year, sends it cross ice, nobody's home, and Biederman will collect for Colgate. She's on the move. Oh, just couldn't get a handle on that. A little out of her reach. Ava Murphy will slide it across. That'll go to Anna Wilgren. She puts it ahead. This is Lacey Eden. Eden tries to get the shot off. It's blocked in front in the gates of Pickering. Pull it back at it. This is once again, it's Biederman. She can't connect. And it pops out to center line almost halfway through this first period. Still awaiting the game's a first goal. Now we're getting down to halfway through this first period. It's been a bit of a choppy start on both sides. Part of it is just the way these teams are playing. And whoever can get control of the neutral zone, meaning who can make clean passes, they're the ones who are going to get control of this game. And as we mentioned, AJ, a lot of players here are catching the eye of their national programs. And there it is. Look at those numbers. And look at how many players are here at the Frozen Four. Yeah, and that's just Team USA. Uh, you know, you've got, a, of course, plenty north of the border as well. But look at those. Eight of the 12 defensemen invited are all playing this weekend. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Obviously, right now, they've got their eyes on the prize here for their collegiate teams. But those that are invited will quickly be able to tr turn their attention to their national team. A lot of red W's on that list. Yeah, and sure are. Right here in front of us today. Pride of, as we mentioned, Mark Johnson, a long and illustrious career with Team USA. Sarah Wozniewicz, she's circling around. Wozniewicz still has it, slides it across. Caroline Harvey walking the line. She'll fire it towards the net. Miranda Card couldn't quite get the redirect in front. She's a little far out for that as she heads off for her change. There's been no shots on net right now for over seven minutes by both teams, and the shots on goal are two and two. 
I say that like a question mark because I can't believe that it's two and two as we've played 11 minutes. Into so different from the first semifinal. <laughs> Absolutely. And we had a ton of nine shots on goal for the Clarks. And there's a shot right there, and she scores! Speak of the devil, it's Kirsten Sims, the nation's leading scorer, and she has the Badgers up one to nothing. Kirsten Sims does not need a lot of space to score, but she is given a runway here. It's a good transition. I talked a lot about the neutral zone. They do a pretty good job of getting through. It's a little choppy, but still, it goes stick to stick to stick. Look at all that space Sims has in the middle there. Colgate's got to do a better job of shutting down that, that high slot. That's danger zone. You see number 27 there. That's a really, really tough ask for Osborne to come up with a save in that situation. That's her 33rd goal of the season. She leads the nation. 72nd point. She'll lead the nation with that, too. An incredible sophomore campaign. Kirsten Sims, and we mentioned it earlier, natural center, moved to wing seamlessly. So the defending champs strike first up one to nothing with 8.30 left on the clock here in the first period. We'll see what Colgate has for a response. Ava Murphy back in her own zone. She'll slide it across for Shayla Edwards. Edwards puts it ahead. And Kelly Gorbatenko will just get a stick on it and send it down. Top line for Greg Fargo's Raiders comes out and good play by him. Gets her to Acme out there. The player most likely to get, get the equalizer here. And there's Osborne who just gave up that goal. She came up, came up with some big saves. Early in this, it's early enough, a lot of hockey left to play, so interesting to see what they will do, how they will combat it. They've had some good opportunities. They need more shots, so you just mentioned it. I think now that was the fifth shot of the game. So here's Sydney Morrow trying to weave her way in, but Gorbatanko will take her down. Held in at the line, Sydney Bard floats it below the goal line to Serdakny. Serdakny working away in the corner. She'll try to put it back up top. Now they do. Bard on her backhand. Floats it back to Serdakny. Murphy pins her up against the boards. Badgers on the move. This is their captain, Britta Curl. Curl inside the line. She's tripped up. There's a penalty on the play. And once again, the Badgers are going to be back on the power play. So Wisconsin up one to nothing off a goal by Kirsten Sims. Colgate. And this girl Clear loves to sell And why not? Her 33rd of the season. Badgers on the power play when we come back. Welcome back to the Women's Frozen Four. I'm ringside with the Colgate head coach, Coach Fargo. Coach, a little over three quarters of the way through the first period. Wisconsin strikes first. How do you capture back the momentum? Yeah, I like our game so far. I, I like a lot of things we've been doing. We had a great kill early in the first. And. Um, you know, we've had some good looks at the other end. I just think we need more of it, but i uh, like the start so far. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you. Greg Fargo's Raiders going to be on their second kill of this game. They were successful, one for one in the first. They allowed only two shots on net in the Badgers' first power play opportunity. But down one to nothing now. An important kill for this Raiders team, but Wisconsin goes to work. Brian on the far side. That pass is intercepted as she was looking for Eden. Coming in is Curl. Curl. Back to Eden. There's O'Brien. She's pushed down along the walls and it goes back up top to Harvey who will hold on. Sims already with a goal today. She sends it low. And here's Emma Pice. Pice will just flip this one up and gets the clear with 30 seconds gone in this Wisconsin power play. Safe play by Pice, but Sir Daphne was busting through there. I think she was hoping for a, a cleaner pass. Lacey Eden sends it ahead to Casey O'Brien. She couldn't quite handle it, and it came outside the zone. 45 seconds gone in this Badgers power play. The Badgers have had a lot of success when they score first. You can see it right there, 24-1. and one. They have been a very dominant team this season. In fact, they're 20-1 and one since Christmas. They have been on an absolute tear. We were talking, and you mentioned that to Coach Mark Johnson. He seemed <laughs> surprised by that. Here we go, shorthanded. Koltakova coming in, can't quite get the shot off. As 
it will be turned right back around by the Badgers. Layla Edwards, though, knocked off the puck as they try to get something set up with less than a minute left here on this power play. Jungles, she slides it across to Wilgren, takes the shot. It's blocked in front. Well, Greg looking to clear, and now Colgate on the move. This is Sarah Stewart, and she'll send it down into the Wisconsin end and head off for a change with 40 seconds left in this Wisconsin power play. See why Colgate's successful on the man advantage. They, what they challenge at the right time. When they see it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, 50-50 puck, they challenge. When they are outmanned, they back off. Right out in front now to Layla Edwards. She takes the shot just wide. 20 seconds left on the power play. Dara Gray crosses center line. She'll send it in. Gray continues to work away. Short-handed. Dying seconds here of the Badgers' second power play of this game. Dara Gregg with a little extra chip on her shoulder after playing two years with the Badgers. It's her third with Colgate. Transferred over here. And Craig Fargo said last year she maybe was a little tougher. Now it's been a long enough time. She's it's not as emotional. Two shots for the Badgers on that power play, but Colgate two for two on the kill. But AJ, they're going to want to stay out of the box because that's going to get dangerous for them if they're not careful as they trail by one. Oh yeah, you just utilize the same players. They've got great penalty killers, but if they're using them too much, they get tired, too much time on ice, and then they're not able to go on the offensive. So it's certainly something they got to be. They're playing a physical game. They've got to play a clean physical game. Cass Betnall on her own end. She'll slide it up. Advances the puck to Serdakny. Looks like Serdakny had a step there. I thought she could have kept going. Serdakny going up against Caroline Harvey. As Dana Boyle mentioned, Harvey missed seven games earlier in this season with a knee injury. Didn't have to have surgery. She was very thankful for that. She rehabbed it, and she looks at it as a positive. As she has way more appreciation for the game than she ever did. Now with a step, it's Madeline Palumbo. She centers. No one there to connect with. And the Badgers will spin it around. Collision there in neutral ice. And Lacey Eden continues on. Weaves her way into the Colgate end. Puck is held up. And Palumbo will skate it out of her own zone. She sends this one cross ice. Back to Palumbo. Takes the shot but fans on it. Not quite in her wheelhouse. Just a little bit off. But good try. Really a good job by her opening up. Layla Edwards on it behind her own net. She'll wait for things to settle down in front with four minutes to play here in the first period. The Badgers up by one off a goal from Kirsten Sims. Maddie Wheeler sends it low. Back up top now. Wilgren slides it across. Long shot from the point. Coming off the stick of Laney Potter and Osborne turned that one aside. The Raiders advance the puck. Stewart got a bit of a piece on it, so no icing on that play, and play will continue on in Wisconsin zone. Here's Sims taking a look at the red line, and she will circle back and begins out again. Dara Gregg trying to weave her way in. That she does. She gains the zone, but she's quickly knocked off the puck. She regains possession, though. And there's a shot from Sir Dacne and McNaughton with the save. Good play by Colgate. East-West and then right back to the middle. Quick puck movement. Dara Gregg over to Pice. Pice tries for the shot. It's blocked. As Marianne Picard got in the way. And Kelly Gorbatenko, she gets called down at the center line. Two and a half to go here in the first. A lot of bodies flying around in this first period. Sir Daphne looking to make a move. She's taken down. There is a penalty on the play. And this time it will be against Wisconsin as the Raiders exactly will get their the first same. power play it's opportunity. Exactly the same. Yeah, you look at this and it's a big trip here. And power play tops in the nation 35% for Colgate to try to get the equalizer. Back here at the Winmore Center. Where the defending national champions, the Wisconsin Badgers, are looking to repeat the feat and get back to the title game. Kirsten Sims with the one goal in that final from last year as they defeated Ohio State. And she has the lone goal here for the Badgers today, her 32nd of the season. But, yeah, you know, and her goal tonight extends her current point streak 
to seven games. What a shot blocker side. Put them up sophomore season now, but freshman getting the only goal in the Natty Champ game. What a what a run for her for such a young kid too. But Sims is right. Sims is on the bench right now as the Badgers are about to go on the kill. Colgate with their first power play opportunity of this game as Britta Curl, the captain of Wisconsin, took a tripping penalty. So we'll see what the top power play in the nation can do. 46 power play goals. You'll want to look out for Christina Kultikova. 11 power play goals. She's certainly the, the one who puts them away. But look at all these guys. They've got so many. The way they move the puck right now, it looks a little... A little lackadaisical, but they'll get some urgency when they get to the offensive zone, we hope. Couldn't get through the neutral zone as Casey O'Brien was there, but here comes Sir Daphne. She weaves her way in. She'll drop it back. Colton Clova takes the shot. It's blocked in front. And that was Caroline Harvey putting her body down. Allison Simpson advances the puck to the center line over to Sydney Morrow, and she slides it across. Sir Daphne on it. Sir Daphne checks up as they look to set it up. A minute gone here in this Colgate power play. Sydney Bart slides it down. Colton Kova. Once again, a blocked shot. And there goes Ava McNaughton with her glove. And Sir Daphne had not one but two attempts. That's interesting. You see Colgate, it's not so much a set power play right now. Uh, their numbers are incredible. Most in the NCAA with 46 power play goals, their percentage is high. Uh, it's, but it, they do seem to just funnel pucks at net and crash the net. It's not a tic-tac-toe pretty passing as much as it's just volume. Puck play back to the line. Caitlin O'Donohoe now gives it to Sydney Bard. Back to O'Donohoe. She centers it. Can't connect. Boy, 30 seconds left in this power play. One minute to play in the first. The Raiders continue to work away with the extra attacker. Here's Bard. She puts it down for Donahoe, who will send it cross ice. There's a shot looking for the redirect off the stick of Emma Pice. Back to Bard. Greg is on it. Greg circling back. She drops it off. Shot on McNaught and a great pad save as she covers. That was the best look for Colgate right there. A good little exchange and and then a, a good save there by McNaughton. But it was a tip here. Watch the, the exchange right here and then the tip that comes through. That's a beautiful tip by Pice right in front. Watch her left shot there. Gets her stick on the ice. She just it flips back a little bit. If she could have gotten a little stronger on it, maybe it could have gone on net. But McNaughton looks... Looks pretty good in that they're tracking the puck the whole way. So Pice and Alyssa Biederman with two opportunities on that power play. McNaughton keeping them in this one. And with that, time will expire. We're back to five on five with 20 seconds remaining in this first period. Colgate trailing by a goal. Zero for one on the power play. They did have those two shots. And here we are, dying seconds of the period. Colgate on the move, dishing it back. Colombo takes the shot, but it's wide. And Lacey Eden was absolutely fine with just letting that buzzer sound. And why not, as the Wisconsin Badgers have a one to nothing lead off a goal from Kristen Sims in the first period. And the defending champions off to a strong start here against the number three seed, Colgate Raiders. Yeah, you know, I think it's gone both both these teams have had their looks, both had good chances, both goalies have come up with solid saves, a little sloppy and that's to be expected when you come into a big stage like this, Mark Johnson told us you gotta just get through six or seven shifts, now they're through the period, they both had a power play they both had successful penalty kills so now they get a little breather, come on back out here and see what they can do and with that we will head down to ice level to Dana Boyle who is with the Badgers goal scorer She's going to get a sip of water first. She worked hard in that first period. Kirsten, only goal in that period. You guys have a lot of success when you're scoring first. What do you need to continue here as we move into the second period? Yeah, I just think we need to continue to play our game and kind of continue to get pucks deep and have a hard four check. I think if we keep doing that, we'll, we'll keep finishing out strong, but I think we can be a little bit harder. But I think we just need to keep sticking to our game. How about the pressure you're putting on the Colgate defense? How would you assess that? Yeah, I think that was kind of our idea from the start was trying to go downhill on them real quick and just kind of 
get those Zeta cough up pucks for our four check to go. So I think once we start to get possession, moving around, we'll be able to settle into our game more and start to get more pucks on net and create more chances. You more than doubled your point production in your sophomore campaign, and you're playing with a lot of confidence. Where does that come from? Yeah, I just think, like you said, like it comes from I have a lot more confidence this year. I'm a little bit more comfortable with the team and the girls and stuff. Also, I'm playing with two really talented players, so that also always helps. But I think just confidence is the biggest thing coming into the season. Thanks for the time out there. Good luck in the second yeah, of period. Of course, thank you. Kirsten Sims on a seven-game point streak as the Wisconsin Badgers hold a one-nothing lead through 20 minutes of play over the Colgate Raiders. We'll see what we have in store when we head into the second period here at the second national semifinal at the Frozen Four. And when it comes to Ohio State, who has already punched their ticket to the championship game with a 4-1 to victory over Clarkson, that was the last loss that Wisconsin suffered, as Dana just mentioned. But it was the Badgers who defeated Ohio State when it came to the WCHA final faceoff to take the tournament. So a lot of confidence riding in this Badgers team as we skate into the second period as they are up one to nothing off a goal by Kirsten Sims. And this is Casey O'Brien streaming in. She is Sims with her, but Kaylee Osborne will just poke check the puck. And O'Brien and Sims, two of the three finalists for the Patty Kazmaier Award. And AJ, you know a little bit of something about that as you were the recipient of it back in 1999. That was also the year you won a national championship with Harvard. Good run, a lot of fun. I uh, came a year after the Olympic gold medal too. And so tough to, tough to top that. Good couple years. Sims drops it back for O'Brien to Harvey. Harvey takes the shot and Osborne will cover. But, you know, AJ's being a little modest here because I tell you, 39 games, 37 goals, 77 assists, 114 points the year that you won the Patty Caz. These women, they're very good, but they did not put up those numbers, AJ. <laughs> and we only we actually only played 34 games. We were 33 and 1. That's so right. So we played did. less games there. It was a different Cooper, time, Cooper, different Cooper. era. But look at what these guys have done in this current era. Cooper. The game has Cooper. changed Cooper. so much. You mentioned it. You're aging me. I don't mind. But it was in 1999, so that was 25 years ago. The growth we've seen in this sport, look at these players. I love these replays, the physicality, the shooting, the everything we've got going on. We've got a, a penalty, another power play here for Wisconsin coming up. But, you know, what these players have done to push the pace of the game internationally at the collegiate level is so impressive. And I just I sit back in awe and watch these athletes compete. Here's a look at while I was uh, talking about the growth of it and the physicality. Here's a look at the um, the extracurriculars, if you are well, just a little. Well, I guess a big shove. And that was Dar Greg, who's going to sit for two. And there's uh, Kristen Sim giving her a little. Sim's giving her a little. Hey, how you doing? Lucky she actually just sometimes refs will not take kindly to that and sit her in the box too. Instead. Wisconsin gets a look at the man advantage. This will be their third power play opportunity so far. Zero for two. Two shots on those two opportunities. See what they can do here as they are up one to nothing. Against a very strong Colgate team when it comes to the penalty kill, as we've seen already this evening. O'Brien sends it across to Sims. She works her way in. Sims checks up. She'll drop it low, just out of the reach, but O'Brien's there in support, and she'll send it back up top to the blue line for Harvey. Slides it across. Here's Sims taking a look. She puts it down low. Curl puts it towards the net. It's turned aside. Back out to Harvey. Harvey takes the shot through layers, just wide of the net. Back on the stick of Sims. Sims sending it cross ice. Back up top to Harvey. She's got it down to O'Brien, checked off her stick, but the Badgers still in control here on the power play with a minute gone. Great play by Morrow. Sims being watched by Pice. Puck is dropped down once again for Sims. Back up top to Harvey. To Sims. Harvey at the line, takes a step. Thinks about it and she'll wheel back. Floats this one towards the net, blocked in front. Now on the stick of O'Brien. She sends it in to Curl, who had, was right in the paint looking for that nifty play. But she was denied as we have 26 seconds left. Wisconsin had two power play opportunities that they were unsuccessful in the first period. And you can see the adjustments that Mark Johnson made in between 
first and second period. There's more urgency, quick plays. They're going down low, trying to not, they're not going up high like an umbrella. They're keeping it down low, little quick give and goes, and then across the crease. Here's a look at a good opportunity. Try to get the tip through there. And that was Britta Curl, the captain right here. This is a great look from overhead uh, and a good save, of course by Kaylee Osborne, but it's a, it, you can see the changes that Wisconsin was trying to make with a little bit of a quick shift, a little east-west, but, but close and down low. Face off in the Badgers zone with 14 seconds left in their power play. Off the draw, Harvey will begin out as she gains speed out of her own end. Layla Edwards on the far side. The power play is over. But Lainey Potter will get the shot off. Three shots for the Badgers on that power play. But they're now zero for three today with the extra man. Which in turn means three successful kills for Colgate. And here they go. This is Tessa Holt takes the shot. And Ava McNaughton with a sliding save. Tessa Hulk realized that she had a had a teammate going along with her. She's on their her onside there. Not a ton of angle. Great save there, but she did have it was a two on one and tough for her to look across there because of the angle with the get picking the puck off the wall and the angle she was coming in. McNaughton will wheel this puck around the boards. Britta Curls there. She checks up. Now the stick of Ava Murphy. She sends it ahead. Sydney Morrow will keep it in at the line. Now it's worked out. Back down to the stick of Osborne. She will assist. And the Raiders will set this the length of the ice. It will be an icing and we will bring it back. Yeah, you can see it. it's funny. It's interesting that when you talk about power plays, if you don't score on them, you just got to make sure you don't lose momentum. And, and Or on the flip side of that, if you're Colgate, you just had to kill that penalty. You try to gain some of that momentum. And Greg Fargo with the way, he's not a fan of them calling that icing. He thought that maybe his player got there. But, uh, you know, in terms of the special teams, that it's a big momentum builder, even if you don't score for either team. So that's going to be the thing. I think Colgate t is taking that can see a little bit they're spreading their wings a little bit after that kill trying to come down trying to stretch their speed through the neutral zone Colton Kova tried to clear the zone but it's held in here's Eden she puts it out front shot right to the glove of Kaylee Osborne and that's coming off the stick of Cassie Hall the first year she leads all first year in points with 24 for the Badgers yeah, you know, once again, there's a little bit too much open space here. That's a great, that's a good slide by Sydney Morrow. I like the timing of it, but there's, you got Bard there too, and some, the back pressure isn't there quick enough, and Cassie Hall is able to get a quick release. It's a good pass right in her wheelhouse. It's a, a big open space for Colgate in that center of the ice. Four minutes gone here in the second period. One nothing for Wisconsin as they work away. Here's Murphy. She fires it towards the net. It's high. Shayla Edwards keeps it in. Allison Simpson will wheel this one around. She can't clear the zone. And now she advances it ahead to Anna Pice. Over to Dara Gregg. And now Colgate Raiders are on the move. That shot was just wide. Just on side, too. Just barely. Badgers with a step. Here comes Sims once again. She's got O'Brien with her. They couldn't connect. Puck worked out to neutralize. It will be a foot race back. Here's Sir Daphne looking to make the move. She drops it back. The shot can't get off. She had Dara Gregg there with her. Maybe a little too cute there as Sir Daphne maybe just hammer the puck rather than try to pass it. And we have a penalty upcoming. Another one against Colgate. It will be Sydney Bard who will take okay, a oh, number uh, eleven. Uh, uh, <laughs> confused there. I was, penalty box. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, wondering what I was. A little confused. There's a look, and again the physicality. That's a 
I, you know, you look at some of these body checks that they've been called for. They're, they're, they are good, clean checks, but they're not trying to hide it. They're not trying to play the puck, and, and that's the difference. When you play a body checking game, the point is to separate your opponent from the puck instead of just playing the puck. They can be physical if their intention is to play the puck first. So the Badgers going on their fourth power play and their second of this period with only five minutes gone, which is kind of unbelievable because heading in, this Colgate team, it was one of the least penalized teams coming into the Frozen Four. They only had four penalties in their last three games. They already They've already got four. four. <laughs> That's, uh, here's another look at it. and it's it, She lines, it, lines her up. To, she's got the puck, and then she steps into her with her shoulder. You know, it's a... Good sweeping play with the stick. She separates her from the puck. She doesn't need to take that extra shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder play. So I don't think that's a bad call. I think Greg Fargo would disagree with me. But, uh, but you know, I think for, for Colgate, they do like their penalty kill. They just don't like to have to kill so many of them. So they've got to go on the offense. And don't want to keep trying to create momentum with a man down. Harvey will send this one across to Curl. Now on the stick of Curl. Back to Sims. She goes across to O'Brien, takes the shot, doesn't get through. Badgers working away here on their power play, their fourth of this outing. O'Brien puts it down low. Eden's working it in front. There's a backhand shot, but it's high. Coming off the stick of Kirsten Sims, who already has a goal here today. And with that, Colgate will get the clear with 30 seconds gone in this power play. An important clear too they're working so hard down there get some fresh legs out there see the Badgers 0 for 3 there's their fourth attempt on the on the power play and some tweaks coming into the second period let's see how they work for Mark Johnson and his Badgers on the stick of Eden she'll put it down low here's Curl puts it out front for O'Brien she takes the shot it's blocked in front O'Brien will recollect the puck Harvey pinching in from the line. Curl giving chase behind the net. 50 seconds left in this power play. On the stick of Sims along the far side. She'll check up. Harvey. She puts it low to Curl. Takes the shot. It's high. O'Brien up to Harvey. She floats one in with traffic in front. They bang away at it, but Osborne will cover. With just 28 seconds left on this power play opportunity for Wisconsin. The, uh, Wisconsin's getting their looks, and look, at Lacey Eden looked a little frustrated skating off there, but you can see say, see how well KK Harvey manages it from now out there, a true quarterback. I said that they went a little lower on that third power play we saw at the beginning of this period, then they came up a little bit higher there, used Harvey on the back end to generate some shots and just try to create some chaos, trying to get some bodies in front of Osborne, take her eyes away. Pice first on it. She manages to almost clear the zone, but Osborne will glove it down, and she's not happy that no. there was a whistle on that play. And you know what? That was a quick whistle. There was <laughs> no was. one around her, but you know what? Again, you mentioned this earlier. Not many goaltenders handle the puck as well as she does. She's ready to play it, and she can ice it, right? She's got a great stick. Uh, she's very strong, so from that position there, everybody was on the flanks. She could have iced it all the way down, and then kept the clock moving and not had fresh legs for Wisconsin out there. So I, I agree with her. That was too quick a whistle by the refs. She showed her protest with a few little jumps. <laughs> Smart way to do it. Ten seconds left here on the power play for Wisconsin. And this time it will be McNaughton who will elect to cover. So with six seconds remaining, they'll bring the faceoff down to the Wisconsin end. Get Sydney Bard out in, in six seconds. He'll be in, looks like she maybe will join them right out there. Try to come all if they can keep it in here, then they can get Sydney all the way across and, and try to get a forward out there. Just depending on where the puck is. Off the draw, great shot by Alyssa Biederman, just high. But she had some gas on that one. So with that, we're back to even strength. Badgers now 0 for 4 on the power play. Five shots in total and two shots on that penalty. Sydney Bard, defenseman, jumping right in here. It looks like we're going to have another penalty upcoming. This time it's going to be against Wisconsin. Bard 
The extra attacker out there for Colgate on the delayed penalty. Here's Sir Dachny. Sir Dachny has some space, takes the shot, but it's blocked by Maddie Wheeler. Here's Morrow. Morrow takes the shot. It's just wide of the net. They continue on with the extra attacker. Penalty coming up against Wisconsin. Sir Dachny on the move. Back up top to Sydney Morrow. She slides it across for Bard. Bard back to Morrow. Morrow. Holds to Serdakny. Serdakny takes the shot. It's ricocheted in front. Still no whistle. Raiders continue on here. Got to get control. It's not just not touching it. Get possession. Exactly. Raiders continue to move. This is Morrow. But will it sneak out of the zone? That it will. So they'll be forced to retreat getting changes they've been out here and shout out to the referee keeping her hand up this whole time and here comes Morrow Morrow on the move looking to do the wrap around can't beat McNaughton and then we will have a whistle on the play unbelievable play though there by the Raiders yeah great patience great poise they didn't force it at all I've got 11 on a trip I'm not sure they realize they're mic'd. So Maddie Wheeler has gone in for Wisconsin, and now Cassie Hall has joined her. We are going to sort this out, and when we return, we'll see what the man advantage will be. Wisconsin number 11, two minutes. Uh, two penalties for Wisconsin, one during that long delay. There's one, a hooking fall down, and, and the, Colgate did a great job, great poise, great control, and then there's a trip here on Cassie Hall. So now, huge opportunity for the number one power play in the country. Two Wisconsin Badgers in the box. Full two minutes here. And not only that, they had immediate timeout to rest those players that had just been out there during that delayed call. Two man advantage here for Colgate as they trail one to nothing in the second period. We'll see what they can do with it. Off the draw up to Allison Simpson. She'll send it across tomorrow. Back to Serdakny who has space. Serdakny. Up to Simpson. Serdakny knocked off the puck, but she will recollect. Serdakny on the move. Puts it in front. The redirect, but McNaughton's pad is there as she makes a great stop. And elevated there. Great save by McNaughton sprawling across. Here's Morrow. Simpson takes the shot, it's blocked in front and it'll leave the zone and there's a foot race between Sir Daphne and Curl. The captain for Wisconsin being a pest here on the penalty kill. A minute 20 left in the five on three here for Colgate. Right out in front, there's a shot by Koltakova. Not one, but two. And they're both denied a block and then a save by McNaughton. Sir Daphne down low, back to Sir Daphne. They're crouching in. There they are. Look how tight the Wisconsin team is. All three guys right in front of McDaughton. Badger's going to get a quick change as the puck leaves the zone. There's 50 seconds left on the two-man advantage. Critical change for the Badgers. Once again, puck out of the zone. Emma Pice is on it for the Raiders. She's in. Pice drops it back. Here's Greg. But a vacant point, and it's out. And the Raiders will be forced to retrieve it. 30 seconds remaining on this five on three. Right out in front, McNaughton with the save. Very dangerous play. McNaughton coming up big here. And you just watch the way she stretches post to post. That's good, quick reflexes. And then she's able to use her stick to try to keep it out of harm's way, too, for that second chance opportunity. And then that's a great, good help there from her defenseman in front of her and look at that save almost using her head but I guess it was her chest protector but you know this is the type of thing I always felt like as a player you go on five on three you have a two-man advantage it's almost a must score in terms of your psycho psychology for the team you you know you have this advantage and that might only be for 30 seconds for 45 a full two minutes this is this is a missed opportunity if Colgate can't get an opportunity and on the flip side of that five on three if you can kill it off that's a huge momentum builder for that team so 15 seconds left on the five on three for Colgate. They're trailing by goal here to Wisconsin in the second period. 
but it will be Wisconsin skating out. Casey O'Brien over to Harvey, dying seconds of the two-man advantage. And with that, we are back to even straight wow. as Wheeler and Hall are out of the box. What a kill. What a kill. McNaughton came up huge. Got some frustration, too, for for Colgate too. Great opportunity for them to get the equalizer. Only down by one but they've got to regroup and figure out how to find that goal. The defending champs the Wisconsin Badgers up one to nothing over the Colgate Raiders here in the second period and on the ice Wisconsin has a lot of representation that will be headed to the USA's Hockey Training Camp roster as they get set for the World Hockey Championship. And our Dana Boyle is with the Executive Director of USA Hockey, Pat Keller. Thanks Leah. Pat, thanks for joining us. Uh, the Women's World Championship will be on U.S. soil. What can we expect from that tournament? Well, hopefully gold medal for Team USA, I'll tell you that. Um, but we got some really good players. Our team goes to camp on Tuesday, and we actually have 16 players here this weekend competing in college. It'll be at that camp on Tuesday trying to make our team and hopefully bring a gold medal back to the U.S. again. There's a noticeable buzz that's surrounding women's college hockey. What can you attribute that growth to? You know, we have more and more girls playing across the country and more high-level girls playing across the country. So when they get here and you've got four great teams that are putting on a heck of a show, I mean, these games are really, really dramatic and close and tense, so it's, it's fun to watch. I think that just continues to build the buzz for women's hockey overall. Speaking of high level, the Patty Kazmaier Award will be given out tomorrow, which goes to the best college hockey player for the women. What do you make of that award and what's the significance? It's just Patty Kazmaier was an incredible player at Princeton, incredible story, um, and, and it's great to honor her memory with this award, and we've had some of the best players in women's hockey that have won the Patty Kazmaier, so we'll be another adding another great name to that list tomorrow. You going to give us a preview who you think might win? Uh, it's someone that wears red and white because they play for <laughs> Wisconsin or they play for Cornell, so I think we're good there. That's a safe answer. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Thank you. That is a safe answer right there uh, by Too Pat. political, Pat. <laughs> too political. So when it comes to the Patty Kazmaier, two of the top three finalists do come from Wisconsin's program and Kirsten Sims and Casey O'Brien. The other is from uh, Cornell's Izzy Daniel, who's had an incredible season as well. And the award will be presented here at the Whittemore Center tomorrow. 12.30 will be aired on NHL Network as well. And it's exciting. Patty Kazmaier's daughter, Serena Vesey, actually will be here and speaking. And, and Patty's granddaughter, Emmy, Emma. So it's amazing that the family has stayed involved. And uh, back when I was I was with it, Dick Kazmaier, her dad, who's no longer with us, was presented the award. And uh, he's a Heisman Trophy winner, actually, back in 1956. So incredible family. And I, I see Serena and Emma are actually sitting right in front of us, too. So it's fun to see them here seeing this when knowing the impact that their late mother had on this great game of hockey. Absolutely. I had a chance to see the Patty Kazmaier Trophy. It was my first time seeing it in person. It's impressive. I saw your name, AJ. No, it is. The names on that trophy are unbelievable. Just the greats in USA Hockey when it comes to the women's game. Correct my stand correct. In 1951, he won the Heisman. I said 56. Daniel Sudakny inside the line as she gains the zone, and she'll just fire it in. Kirsten Sims sends it ahead, but it's kept in by Sudakny, who once again is on the puck for the Raiders. That pass is intercepted. We have just under eight minutes to play here in the first period. Back to get it will be Sydney Morrow. It'll be icing, so we will bring it on back. Oh, my goodness. We took oh, a pause. Oh, boy. Let's I was, just enjoy this. Yeah, no, let's, let's enjoy this let's, picture, let's, AJ. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? When you look at that picture, that's not even high definition. Look how blurry that is. That shows how old we are. Jeez. Uh, yeah, at least it's in color. That's right. Thank you. The captain of the Crimson yeah, that's, herself. That's, that was a long time ago. Glory days. All downhill from there, people. I would beg to differ. I would beg to differ. Also, Brandy Fisher is in the house. She's going to be presenting the Patty Kazmaier. She won the very first award in 1998, a year before I did. So it's exciting, the legacy of this award. Here's Casey O'Brien. Tries to send it across to Layla Edwards. They couldn't connect as that play was broken up. Ava Harvey tries to shovel it out of her own end, but it's held in, but it will be offside, so we'll bring it outside the line for the face-off. It's interesting. You look at Colgate. They had that huge opportunity with a full two minutes, two-man advantage, and since then, they've, they've put the pressure on. They've kept it in their offensive zone, but it almost feels like they're trying to recover from that. 
even though they weren't scored on, it's still a one-goal game, but they just knew they let a, a golden opportunity slip right through their fingers. And, and credit, of course, to the Badgers that killed it, both in goal and the other players on the ice. Osborne forced to be sharp as she lays out to cover the puck. Sarah Wisnevich was crashing in on her. Just over seven minutes to play here in the second period. Leah Hextall alongside AJ Mazelko and Dana Boyle is with us at ringside as we're here in the second national semifinal. Ohio State has already punched their ticket to the championship game on Sunday. The winner of this matchup between the two and three seed right in front now on Osborne is Lacey Eden. Puck is still loose and it pops out to Ava Murphy. She'll take a shot but it's blocked in front. We'll see who it will be. Wisconsin or Colgate who will be the opponent for those Buckeyes. Pice tries to alleviate the pressure. Raiders work it into neutral ice. Could be a high stick here. And there it is. Wisconsin, huge opportunity and another big stop by Kaylee Osborne. But watch this off the draw. It's, it's sort of a 50-50 puck, but Wisconsin comes up with it. And then it's Sydney Morrow, who I think has had a phenomenal game. And I've noticed all over the place. But look, she gets her back turned. And you allow Lacey Eaton. She's one of those names on the Team USA roster. She's a phenomenal goal scorer, and she's all alone in front. Shut down in that situation by Kaylee Osborne. But Colgate has to be a little bit more responsible with the puck, a little bit more responsible in their defensive end. Colgate in their second-ever Frozen Four appearance. They're looking for the program's first national title. And as AJ mentioned earlier, not just in women's hockey, but just in the school's history. Yeah, it's sort of amazing. I mean, I'm familiar with Colgate. My husband went there, and so I, I have a lot of, actually, friends that are here from the New England area cheering Colgate on. But I, I was really surprised to hear that in any sport. It'd be exciting for the university. They could bring it home. Raiders head coach Greg Fargo let us in on that little nugget yesterday. And AJ was having a great chat with some of the players about the local, uh, you know, haunts, I would say. Local watering holes, yeah. Yes. Some, some, uh, you, were, yeah. you seemed quite familiar, AJ, I'm going to say. <laughs> you and your husband. <laughs> Good social life. Well, that some of them exist, and <laughs> some of them no longer <laughs> exist. It's about five and a half here to play in the second period. Wisconsin up one to nothing off a goal from Kirsten Sims in the first period. Badger mascots in the stands cheering on. Wisconsin. Bucky the Badger? I think it's Bucky. The Naughton will elect to cover that right off the draw. And they'll line it up again. Now we got it. Puck is down. Play continues on. Sydney Bard on the backhand. Tries to shovel it down low. Scramble for the puck on the far side. Kept in at the line, but now it will exit. Puck pops out of play. Goes into the Raiders bench. See this face off. Took a while to get the puck down here when they finally did. Watch the shot. Watch how it ends up. It ends up being this a crazy bounce and good job there. Of course, we talk about McDonald the first year for the Wisconsin Badgers. Stands six feet tall. She covers a lot of net, but she moves really well and incredibly confident for a rookie goaltender. Raiders work it up top to Sydney Morrow. Morrow being watched to float it towards the net. Lots of traffic in front of McNaughton. No one knows where the puck is, especially McNaughton, but it's behind her. But she's got some support as Anna Wilgren will skate it out safely. And here's Sims. Her shot is blocked in front by Bard, who loses the handle on her stick. Layla Edwards drops it back, but that puck was intercepted as it was attended for O'Brien. And here comes Sir Daphne. Greg, here's Pice, takes the shot, it's high. Puck all the way down to the Raiders' end, four and a half to go here in the second. 
Colgate looking to tie this game at one against Wisconsin. Cassie Hall skates it out of her own end. Raiders back to get it. Shayla Edwards sends it ahead. Here's Hall. Takes the shot just wide of the net. Ava Murphy will hold it in for her team. Hall's back on it. She sends it cross ice. This is to Shayla Edwards. Edwards knocked off the puck. It's back to the center line. Under four to go here in the second period. Edwards straight up the gut on the stick of Eden. She's knocked off of it. Here's Hall. Hall takes the shot. Osborne with the save. We have a whistle for offside. And the Wisconsin Badgers, they are the defending champions. They are looking to be the first team to repeat since Clarkson did it back in 2017 and 18. They're up one to nothing here in the second. Wisconsin Badgers look to repeat as national champions and they have had a very strong season under the tutelage of their head coach Mark Johnson. 32 wins on the year and they won the WCHA tournament defeating Ohio State University 6-3. They have seven national titles. That's the most of any program. They're looking to add an eighth one here this weekend if they can make it to the final against Ohio State. There's Mark Johnson, happy guy right there, and why not as they claim their seventh title? Happy and a little damp. <laughs> <laughs> a little, I don't know, I don't know if Gatorade or water with their beverage of choice to dump on Coach Mark Johnson, but he does not seem to mind. All time winningest coach, UW history. See what his Badgers can do here today as they do have a one to nothing lead with just over three minutes to play here in the second period. Hall sends it across. Now up front to Harvey. Caroline Harvey surveying. Her shot is directed up and over the net. Play continues down below the goal line. This is Sydney Bard. She's looking to escape. Sends it around to Dara Gregg, who will manage to clear the zone. Three minutes to go here in two. Here's a quick step. This is Emma Pice. Pice takes the shot. It's just wide. And Greg Fargo telling us that Emma Pice, her speed is her superpower. And you just saw a little bit of a burst of it right there from the first year. Derek Gregg hobbled off the bench. Hobbled off to the bench. Uh, it was a good opportunity there. You mentioned Emma Pice, first-year player, and listed at 5'9". Plays much bigger than that, though. She looks she looks rangy out there. She covers a lot of ground, and playing on that top line, great, great chemistry with Serdakne on that top line. Really a compliment to her, as their head coach Greg Fargo was saying, that Emma Pice can play with Serdakne because she can keep up with her, and Serdakne being one of the top players in the nation, that says something for the first year. I like what he said. He goes, Pice has really popped off since Christmas. <laughs> That's some alliteration right That's there. right. Raiders continue to work away here. Madeline Palumbo in the corner, working away. She's going up against Katie Kudlowski. Now up to the line, Sydney Morrow. She'll pop it right down low. Loose puck out in front. It's collected by the Badgers. And they'll send it up to center ice. Under two to go here in the second period. Colgate looking to even the score. Once again, the Colgate Raiders had an excellent opportunity in this middle frame. They had a two-man advantage, but all credit to the Badgers, who killed it off. Layla Edwards passes center line. She gains the zone. She'll send this one across. This is Sims, the goal scorer here today for Wisconsin. Kirsten Sims puts it across for Edwards. She loses it in her skates. Puck is still loose in front. Badgers still in possession. Marianne Picard over to Edwards. Takes the long shot. Osborne 
will cover. With a minute 14 left in the second period, Kaylee Osborne will cover the puck up and we'll have a face-off. Defensive zone for Wisconsin here. Marianne Picard will take it for the Badgers. Bit of a log jam here for the puck. It comes around. Ava Murphy will take a step to hold it in. Maddie Wheeler on the far side. Long shot doesn't get through from the point coming off the stick of Edwards. Minute to play here in two. Shayla Edwards floats it in right to Osborne who will quickly cover. And a few little greeting cards in front of the net of the Raiders goalie. Yeah, good job by Colgate though. The defenseman standing up protecting Osborne and certainly something that I look at even before I was a goalie mom but now even more so. You want to make sure that the defensemen are standing up and it's Bard right there, City Bard number 11 that stands there and then she gets a little hey how you doing from Picard but uh, you know I, goalies are in a very vulnerable position. They're laying out, they're down, they're, they don't have any protection on the back of their bodies so it's really important for the defending team to make sure that they're putting up a little blockade. Puck out to the neutral zone. The captain for the Badgers, Britta Curl. She sends it over to Hall. She's knocked off the puck, but she recollects. 30 seconds remain here in the second period. The Badgers continue to work away. Colton Kova will collect for the Raiders. The puck will be dished out and all the way down to the Badgers' end. Here's Biederman. Alyssa Biederman looking for support. She has it. There's a quick shot. What a great Coming save by stick of Allison Simpson. Yeah, McNaughton comes right out. He does a great job reading that. Cuts the angle down. And here's Sydney Morrow. A little bit of jam here for the Raiders in the dying seconds. But that will do it in the horn will sound. That would have been a big one for Colgate, too, nearing just in that last couple seconds here. You've got Simpson who goes for this. It's a good shot. Goes for that blocker side, but... Good job by McNaughton, recognizing she's getting the help from her defending team. It's just a one-on-one. -on -one. She can come out, cut that, cut that angle right down. So the Wisconsin Badgers hold a one-nothing lead after 40 minutes of play. Colgate Raiders with a primetime opportunity. They had a five-on-three advantage that was killed off by the Badgers. So it'll be interesting to see what's in store for this third period. And a very close contest between the number two and number three seed in this Frozen Four. And with that, we'll head down to Dana, who's standing by with Danielle Serdakny. Danielle, we're two periods in. What do you make of the play of your team? Uh, yeah, I think it's going really well. Obviously, it's a bit of a back-and-forth game, a few special teams, but I think um, we're getting some good chances here, and hopefully the next one's going in. What's it like playing in front of Osborne in the cage, who's so dynamic? Uh, it definitely makes our group confident. Obviously, she's a great goaltender, one of my good friends. She plays the puck like a defenseman. It's pretty unbelievable to have her back there. How about the freshman, Pice, plays on the same line as you? What's it like, and how does she have such confidence? Yeah, I think that she brings a lot of energy. She puts in the work every day. It's been great to watch her grow as a player and a person. And uh, Yeah, it's been awesome playing with her. Thanks for the time. Good luck in the third period. Thank you so much. Wisconsin Badgers up one to nothing over the Raiders. We'll see what the third period has in store when we return here from the Whittemore Center at the Frozen Four. That it is, Dana. What a wonderful program. And their head coach, Greg Fargo, even his daughter is one of the rising Raiders. Yeah, his daughter Emerson is paired with Michelle Palumbo, so he, he really gets behind it. And so far, it's the second year they've done it, so so far they haven't gotten the other teams involved. But I was really impressed. I think it's such a great idea. In an area where there isn't any professional teams and a way to really get uh, young girls involved and, and excited about hockey. So here we are in the third period. Wisconsin up one to nothing, looking to punch their ticket back to the national championship. Trying to be the first team to repeat since Clarkson did back in 2017 and 2018. We know that Ohio State, the number one seed, will be waiting for the winner of today's game on Sunday. Ohio State taking down Clarkson by a score of 4-1. to one. A tighter game than what that score may indicate. Things didn't really break open until the third period. Late in the third period, too. 1-1 one, one early on. 1-1 one, one in, the, in the first. No scoring in the second. And then, uh, you know, after the 10, maybe close to the five-minute mark is 
Wisconsin got two quick ones and then an empty winner. Alyssa Biederman doing the battle. Loose puck now. Lacey Eden will drop it back for Layla Edwards. She gains the zone. She's knocked off the puck by Dara Gregg. Called in at the line. Early on, Colgate did a really good job with their clean breakouts. Now you see a lot of them flipping the pucks, trying to get it in the neutral zone. They do have some speed, but so does Wisconsin. I think they're trying to trying to put the Jets on to the neutral zone, but probably better served with those clean passes we saw earlier in the game. AJ, for the Raiders, who are in their second ever Frozen Four appearance and trying to earn their first national championship, when you come out in a third period and you're down one to nothing to the defending champs, what are you looking to do? Is it breaking it up into segments of the period, or is it just going full out? You know, I think it's going, at this point, you got to go full out. Your season's on the line. I'm sure there are tweaks that they're going to make, especially if they're talking about the man advantage, what they were able to do. And we saw some tweaks on the Wisconsin side from the first to the second period on their power play, and now we've got a nice in call. Uh, but I think if you're looking at Greg Fargo, maybe he's the one talking about their breakouts. And talking about getting through the neutral zone, getting a little cleaner. I have to imagine he's telling them to get shots on net. I mean, they only have 11 shots on net uh, through the two, two periods so far. And these two teams usually have a lot of shots on net, but they're approaching some of their season lows if it continues on at this pace. Wilgren sends this one cross ice as so she couldn't connect. Sarah Wisnevich behind the net. Continues to work away. She brings the puck out. Wisnevich sends it up top. Wilgren's shot is blocked in front. And Pice will give chase to it. She's got Sudakny with her. Sudakny just over skates it. And Maddie Wheeler will float it in to the Raiders' end as Kaylee Osborne's out to play. Caitlin O'Donohoe cross ice to Pice. She couldn't handle the pass. Two minutes gone here in the third period. Badgers up one to nothing. Off a goal from Kristen Sims. The nation's leading scorer and a Patty Kazmaier nominee along with her teammate Casey O'Brien. That award will be given out tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern. And it'll also be airing on NHL Network. Always an exciting time. Our friend Jamie Hirsch will be hosting that. And we'll see who the big winner is. We heard Executive Director of USA Hockey say... She will be wearing red and white. Her, <laughs> her jersey is red and white. Very politically correct yes. answer. You can see why he has the role he does. Sims in the corner, pinned down. I, I, you know, you think you asked about Colgate when they when going all out for this period. It's also just winning the next shift, right? I mean, that's going to be the big thing for them. They can't win the game right now, but they've just got to go and try to create pressure, try to create some of that momentum and try to regain some of that. I, I still think there's a little bit of a disappointment that they weren't able to get the equalizer on that two-minute five-on-three. So with Wisconsin up one to nothing, the Badgers have 11 shutout wins this season. Ava McNaughton, who's in net right now, has four to her credit. And, and you know, they're, Wisconsin last year, Wisconsin this year, they, uh, they this team seems very comfortable winning in many different ways, right? And, and again, the national championship last year, they won one nothing against Ohio State. And WCHA final faceoff against Ohio State. They won 6-3, to three and Caroline Harvey said it was the best complete game they had play, played all season, knocking out the number one team, Ohio State. Um, but it's, they have lots of weapons. Here's one of them right now. Colton Kova brings it in, but it's offside. Colton Kova is, uh, see, she plays with Madeline Palumbo right there. You're taking a look at that's the, the first year that's paired with Greg Fargo's daughter Emerson and the Rising Raiders. But Colton Kova does a great job at the second line center here and um, plays for the she's 26 goal, leads the team, plays for the Czech Republic. It's a good all around player. There's a quick shot right into the glove of McNaughton. As Biederman loses her stick. Uh, you don't get many golden opportunities like that. Watch this neutral zone face off, and it's a Caroline Harvey goes D to D, and it's just picked off. It's a miscue by Caroline Harvey. I think Biederman's maybe a little bit surprised to get this opportunity. Good snag by her, and then doesn't make it very difficult for McNaughton as she comes in. And it sort of looked to me like she was expecting back pressure, but she was really all alone. She could have gone in and walked around her. 
Sydney Bard tries to get the shot off, and now McNaughton has 14 saves on the day. Bard keeps it in at the line. Across now for Pice. She sends it to Morrow. Morrow takes the shot, but it doesn't get through traffic. Casey O'Brien takes a whack at it as she's hauled down. Bard back on the puck. She sends it around to Greg, who will meet up with it. But it is the captain, Britta Curl, who's on it for the Badgers. Here's Sims. She floats it towards the net. That could have been dangerous with O'Brien right in front. Puck collected at center ice by Serdakny. Serdakny gains the zone. She'll hold up, waiting for support. Now she has it. A lot of blocked shots by Wisconsin, doing an excellent job of muddling it up and not giving them any clean looks. Sudakny wheeling around from behind her own net, sends it up to Palumbo. She'll advance the puck. Biederman back going for it against Anna Wilgren. Caroline Harvey checks up. She'll send it ahead to the red line. It'll be batted in by Maddie Wheeler as the batters get a change. Five minutes gone here in the third period. Colgate need a goal to tie this game as they trail one to nothing. And here's O'Donohoe takes the shot. McNaughton turns it aside. Harvey will lift this one up and gets it out to neutral ice. Nina Brick fires it right back down. Harvey sends it ahead. Turnover in her own end. They couldn't make anything of it as Nina Brick couldn't get the shot off. Interesting choice there by Bard trying to kick it rather than use her skate. Or Here's stick. Layla Edwards coming in trying to make the move. She's held up. Puck now out in front. There's the shot by Cassie Hall and Osborne got a piece of it and redirected it away. Two teams battling in neutral ice. The Raiders will come away with it. Sarah Stewart. She sends it back up top. There's a shot by Allison Simpson, but it was blocked by Curl. It's a 17th block shot there for Wisconsin. They've done an excellent job in that neutral zone. Uh, excuse me, in that slot and high slot area. Simpson back on it. She's being watched by Curl. Worked up into neutral ice. Puck played right back down to the Raiders end, and Osborne out to play it. Loose puck. Once again, held in here by the Badgers. They continue to work away. Sir Daphne begins out from her own end. Sir Daphne taken down, and there will be a penalty on the play. Osborne to the bench for the extra attacker, but quick whistle. Almost consider taking, oh, they got a media timeout. I was going to say wide. take a timeout otherwise. Wisconsin. So Can Maddie Wheeler will person. sit for two, and Colgate will return to the power play as they trail one to nothing here in the third. Colgate Raiders are the third seed here at the Frozen Four. They're the ECAC champions. It was the fourth consecutive time that they've won their conference. First time in over 30 years that that has occurred. And here they are. Participating in their fifth NCAA tournament, their second ever Frozen Four appearance, and they're trying to punch their ticket to compete for the program's first ever national title. What do you think about that, Dana Boyle? I think they got a good thing going at Colgate. It was interesting talking to Coach Fargo this week about the culture shift while at Colgate. He knew the program was trending in the right direction when student-athletes for Colgate started coming to the rink without their backpacks. That separation between student-athlete when at the rink, it's all hockey. You combo that with international players, they're trending in the right direction. Raiders look to trend up here on the power play. They haven't been able to cash in three attempts. They're trailing one to nothing here in the third, and this is a big moment, AJ, for this Raiders team to well, convert. Right there you can see it, it, Wisconsin's doing an excellent job closing, taking time and space, and being aggressive. Oh, and inter KK Harvey just got away with an interference behind the play. Uh, you know, it's it, one of those things, too, though. Colgate's got to have out, they've got to outman the puck. If they've got the puck and then Wisconsin sends somebody, there's got to be better support. Right now, that's not what I'm seeing on the power play for Colgate. Sydney Morrow will send it across ice. But once again, the Badgers will get a clear. 
Almost a minute gone in this Raiders power play. Raiders gain the center line. Now they have the zone. Sydney Bard. She drops it for Pice. She'll shovel it down low to Dara Gregg. And it's back on the stick of Pice who puts it up top. There's a long shot by O'Donohoe. Another shot coming at McNaughton. Kick save by the Badgers goaltender. She's down and we have a whistle on the play. Puck was free. Great saves by McNaughton. Some good opportunities. Puck was rolling here, so Colgate's having a tough time controlling it. But what a great save through traffic that is by Ava McNaughton. Tracking it the whole way. And there you can see that's why uh, that, the puck just comes free of three. But the, puck, the, the whistle was blown. And the, puck, it, the second the refs are lines and lose sight of the puck, they blow that whistle. And that's what they're supposed to do. 35 seconds left here on the Raiders' power play. Off the draw to the stick of Sudakne. Sudakne will put it up top. There's the long shot. Didn't get through to McNaughton. With all the block shots, I don't think the long shots are the answer right now for Colgate. They got to get down deep. They got to try to go low, give and goes. Back here for Simpson. Simpson takes a walk. She sends it across. Back up to Simpson. She's being pressured by Curl. Now right out in front, and the Badgers will lift it up and out. And with that, we're back to five on five. Another huge kill. Interesting. They had one wave off the high stick, but the ref closer to the play called that high stick, so the face-offs will come all the way back down to the Raider end. So the Raiders are now zero for four on the power play. They've had seven shots in total. They managed to just get two on the power play we just saw, but... This is a big storyline for this Colgate team with the game being one nothing for the Badgers, not being able to convert with the extra man, especially because they have such a strong power play. I know. If you told them ahead of time they'd have that many power plays, I think they'd feel really good about their chances and uh, just aren't able to, to convert. Nine minutes gone here in the third period. The Badgers holding on with a one nothing lead. You see Avery picking, pickering back out there because she knew that Kaylee Osborne was going to play that puck rather than coming and gathering and we've been talking a lot about the way she handles puck haven't seen it a lot obviously the scouting report is out and Wisconsin is doing a good job of taking away that advantage for Kaylee Osborne for Colgate looks like Sardacne is going off the ice we'll try to get a get some clear, clarity why she's going off the ice helmet in her hand the Raiders captain their leading point producer fourth in the nation of points. Raiders will fire this one the length of the ice. And this is Greg. Puck worked around. As the Raiders look to get something going here in the third to tie this game. Looking to solve Ava McNaughton. Here comes Curl. She gets a shot off. Osborne gloves it down. Play continues as Biederman will clear her zone. Harvey back on it. Here's O'Brien. O'Brien is Kristen Sims with her. The dynamic duo for this Wisconsin team. Kristen Sims with the lone goal in this hockey game thus far. It came back in the first period. Raiders with the move, take the shot, McNaughton with another kick save. Puck plays back out to neutralize, and the Raiders bring it right back into the Badgers zone. Nine and a half here to play in the third period. Ava Murphy on it for Wisconsin. She sends it ahead to Layla Edwards. Edwards gains the center line and will just dump it into the Raiders' zone, and Osborne will elect to cover it. What a chance here it was with Colgate. It's defense and Sydney Bard coming in, showing some silky. Oh, son. sorry, I stand corrected. That is Alyssa Biederman with a great shot. Great save by Ava McDonald. Just deserve the shutout. Back here at the Whittemore Center for the second national semifinal between 
The defending champion, Wisconsin Badgers, and this is the goal by Kirsten Sims back in the first period to give the Badgers a 1-0 lead over Colgate. And the winner of this matchup will go on to face Ohio State in Sunday's final at 4 Eastern on ESPNU. Ohio State, a 4-1 victory over Clarkson earlier today. And they are looking to get back to becoming national champions. Ohio State's last natty was in 2022. And of course, last year was Wisconsin. And a one nothing defeat over Ohio State. And here we are in a one nothing game. The Raiders looking for the equalizer with just over nine minutes to play here in the third period. They are the number three seed in this Frozen Four. We're still missing Serdakne, went off the ice for unknown reasons, and Sarah Stewart with the puck right now is taking her spot, centering that second line. Madeline Palumbo throws it towards the net, a bouncy puck. Just missed. Great play. Here's Simpson to Palumbo. Takes another shot. McNaughton will hold. That's a good play. And, you know, you've got the odd man rush coming through the neutral zone, and they do a good job with the having a little bit of depth coming in the in the offensive zone, making sure that there's some... You can watch the way they're coming. They've got a center net drive, and that's the one where the puck goes a good tip. And with the help of K.K. Harvey, the puck goes wide short side but it's a it's a nice play when you've got that center net drive as a defenseman you've got to go with them but often the puck will go to the high the higher forward but good play by Colgate Badgers win the draw they're on the move but Sydney Bard will float this one back down to the Badgers zone Shayla Edwards first on it for Wisconsin Britta Curl sends this one cross ice there's a long shot and they score Badgers up two to nothing as the defenseman Vivian Jungles was hit on the trailer. Well, transition team here for Wisconsin using their speed. It's a good play up the wall by Shayla Edwards. It's, it's funny, it's all bobbling pucks here, but they do an excellent job of, of uh, corralling them. And you know what's great about this? It's that east-west place play, and it goes from Britta Curl all the way over to Jungles and just tucks it in underneath. That's a good shot underneath the glove of Osborne. Osborne's probably her. You can see her left glove goes up a little bit. Maybe could have kept it down. Maybe one she's going to want back. But you know what? That's really hard when you're going east-west, going laterally the way that they are. Good pass by Britta Curl, and I think almost everybody on the ice touched that puck for Wisconsin as they came through the neutral zone. That's Jungle's fifth goal of the season to put her Badgers up two to nothing here in the third with just over eight minutes to play. That's a that's a that's a tough one there for Colgate. You know, it's still only a two goal game with plenty of hockey left to play. But Colgate's been knocking on the door, unable to solve McNaughton. So they've got a real hole to dig out of now. And the captain Britta Curl with the assist on Jungle's goal, and she now has 62 points. Wisconsin weaves their way in as that was Gorbatanko. And when it comes to Britta Curl, their head coach, Mark Johnson, saying he, she's the type of player that he would like to see nominated for a Patty Kazmaier Award. She's got over 20 goals, 60-plus points. She plays that 200-foot game. He also said that usually they've got a captain and alternate captains. And said so this year, just a captain. That's all they needed. Britta Curl is such a good leader. He said there are plenty of other people. He said we could have had everybody wear an A because we have such a great leadership group. But he really felt like Britta stood head and shoulders above the others. So just over seven minutes to go here in the third period. The Badgers up two to nothing, looking to punch their ticket to the national final where Ohio State is waiting. This is Britta Curl's 40th assist on the season and look at her eyes up and it's such a perfect pass right over and you've got O'Brien down the middle and clearing plays. And Britta Curl, there she is with a great celebration, sees that puck tuck right in, big smiles, great emotion for them, knowing with eight-plus minutes left when that goal was scored, that's a that's a big one for them. Good look by, you know, most people in that situation expected Britta Curl to shoot that puck. It's been a good transition through the neutral zone. She's a forward, she's got great points. Said she looks across, makes that cross-seam pass. Here's Layla Edwards, a two-on-one with Caroline Harvey. That pass was intercepted by Sydney Bart. So 
So the Raiders in crunch time right now as Bard has it on her stick as they trail two to nothing. Once again, Danielle Sudakny left the ice. Dar Gregg just inside the line, takes a step, tries to get the shot off, but can't connect. Play continuing on behind the goal of Osborne. Biederman bangs this one off the boards. So the Raiders look to get something going, and as AJ just said, so Daphne back on the ice. And they're going to need her here. And we're going to have an upcoming penalty. It's going against Wisconsin, so the Raiders with another power play opportunity as they're down by two here in the third with just under six to go. Did I say that five on three is a must score? <laughs> I'd say this one is even more of a must score. Tripping call. Johnson, so. number 28. Two minutes, tripping. Maddie Wheeler takes a penalty here, and it's pickering. Her First of all, her stick goes high there, and then she's trying to get, get her stick up in there to try to pick her pocket, but instead Wheeler gets tripped to the penalty box, and here's Danielle Serdachny. Good news for the Raiders. Get her back with whatever, whatever the problem was. Maddie Wheeler will sit for two Raiders on the power play. It's the must-score type of time here as they trail by two. Oh, we'll send this one cross ice to Sir Dacne. She puts it low, looking for Colton Kova. She's being watched. Colton Kova will scoop this one out. Once again, Britta Curl with the shot block on Simpson. Simpson has it at the line. She floats it through the layers, but it doesn't get to McNaughton. And as you said, AJ, those long shots just don't seem to be working against this Wisconsin team. Wisconsin will get the clear. Minute 20 left here on this power play opportunity for the Raiders, who have a top power play in the nation. 46 power play goals on this season, but have been held off of it. See Serdakny back on the bench, laboring a little bit, and she was, it was an athlete, it was an injury type situation. She was seen by an athletic trainer, unable to spe specify to Dana Boyle what the injury was, but back out there now, and with her season and college career on the line as a fifth year. Raiders offside, so we'll bring the face off just outside Wisconsin's blue line. We have 50 seconds left on this Colgate power play. Fifty seconds left on the power play, 441 left here in the third. The Raiders trailing by two. They need a goal against this Wisconsin team. Bar begins out with speed. She takes it in, coming down the wing. She looks to center it over to O'Donohoe. It's broken up and turned around the other way as Lacey Eden shorthanded. Eden knocked off the puck by Greg. What a great play. Derek Greg, not even a defenseman, hustles back, turns backwards at, at maybe one of those. She could have really played defense the way she played that one. Ten seconds left here on the Colgate power play. Wisconsin did a great job of chewing some time there shorthanded. They did, you know, and, and Colgate's been frustrated on the man advantage all night long, and a lot of it is the way Wisconsin playing. I, you know, I'm sure that maybe they're frustrated by some of the decisions they're making, but Wisconsin doing an excellent job, staying poised, staying controlled, getting their sticks in the passing lane and just thwarting every attempt they've had. So another successful kill by Wisconsin. As they continue to come here, O'Brien with a little dish. But that one was cleanly intercepted. 3.20 left to go here in the third. So Daphne sends it around. Shot on McNaughton. And she will have another save. Well, come Sunday, the national championship will be awarded. We know Ohio State will be there. The question is, will it be Wisconsin or Colgate? Right now, the Badgers are up 2 nothing. 
I would assume that the Ohio State Buckeyes are watching this game with intent as they are awaiting the winner between Wisconsin and Colgate. Right now, the defending champion Badgers up 2 to nothing with 3.17 to go here in the third. And the big story for Colgate in this game is that they haven't been able to convert on the power play. They have been 0 for 5, but all credit to Wisconsin for those five perfect kills, including... A five-on-three advantage for the Raiders. Well, associate coach Peter Elander is right in front of us for Ohio State, so he has been scouting them <laughs> all night long. But they know each other well if it does hold up with this score. And once again, last year in the final, it was Ohio State taking on Wisconsin. Wisconsin with a one nothing victory in that game. But the Raiders will continue to work here just under three minutes in the third. Goaltender is pulled. They have the extra attacker as Osborne is to the bench. The NCAA Wrestling National Championships culminate tomorrow evening in Kansas City on ESPN and ESPN Plus at 7 Eastern. For more information, you can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships our championship will go at 4 o'clock Eastern here from the Whittemore Center Sunday. Raiders with their tender pull. The extra attacker on the ice. Down by two with two and a half here to play in the third. Dar Greg working hard in the corner. Colton Kova coming in for support. It's held in by Simpson. Nina Brick also comes in to help. Bouncy puck. There's the shot by Morrow. Doesn't get through. Once again, it's a block. We've seen that several times tonight. Dark Greg dishes this one out in front, and Colgate scores! The Raiders are on the board as Christina Kultikova with a huge goal. And it's now 2-1. to one. Uh, Some energy on the Raider bench now with that one. McNaughton had a shutout leading up to this. There was a scrum behind, and with, looking at it live, and we'll get a chance to look at it again, it looked like the Raiders actually got away with one. The ref right in front of them was sort of turned around and, and got away. And there was a look. It's Colton Kova ultimately puts it in on the backside. But here, let's take another look. This is McDonald. She's got her eyes up, and um, that puck goes off of Nina Brick's skate, and it's a fortuitous bounce. And that's a, they haven't had a lot of those actually here tonight for them and so good job by them to capitalize they pulled the goal you'll we'll have a look it's just about two minutes now i have to believe that they will pull the goalie as soon as they can see if they can get the equalizer that they will osborne will be waiting intently to see when she can crash out of her crease puck just out of the reach of emma pice the badgers will send it back down below the goal line Of a stoppage of play. Yeah, let's go back and take another look at that the goal that Colgate just had. There's the scrum behind. And, you know, I, I said it's a fortuitous bounce. I take that back. That's a good look right there. Nina Brick directs that puck. She does a really good job with her skate to kick it over, knowing that Colton Kova is on the other side, on the back side, to tuck it in. Nina Brick tied for third in goals for this Colgate team with 18 on the season. And that was Colton Kova's team leading 27th of the year, and it's a big one as they've cut the lead in half with a buck 40 left on the clock here in the third. They need possession needed, get it north of the red line and see if they can get a chance to get... Yep, here comes Osborne out of the net again. Osborne's on the move. She's, ta- she's stopped a bit. Yep. She's heading back to her net. Well, that's good. That's, you know what? That's good awareness by her. Maybe it was the coaching staff that told her, but there was an offside, delayed offside on the far blue line. That's, a, that's the right call. Colton Kova. On the move, gains the line. She's got two white sweaters on her. Now we do have the empty net. The extra attackers out there for the Raiders. Just over a minute left to play here in the third period. The Raiders down 2-1. to one. One minute left to play in the period. Now on the stick of Morrow, she'll put it back up top. Here's Simpson, Simpson. Throws it towards the crease. McNaughton with the save. Puck out in front. It's still loose on the stick of Greg. She tries to center it for Sudakny, but it bounces off her stick. And here's Brick. Puts it back down for Greg. Another save by McNaughton. You know, Colgate's doing a good job getting it inside, though, and faking shots, trying to block the 
the block shots and oh man Nina Brick hustled a little too hard and negated the icing and with that the Badgers were able to get a change 20 seconds left on the clock Wisconsin up 2-1 to one. Raiders with the extra attacker and the empty net but this is Layla Edwards Edwards there it is Layla Edwards will ice this one for the Badgers as they regain their two-goal lead. They're up 3-1 to one with just 12 seconds remaining here in the third. Good work by Layla Edwards. She's made, plays left wing on that high-powered top line with O'Brien and Sims, but here she is making no mistake about it, getting into the hash marks before she buries it with authority, smiles and handshakes all around for the Badgers who are going to be headed to the national championship game on Sunday to try to defend their title against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Wisconsin goal scored by number 10, Alyssa Edwards. So Edwards ices it for the Badgers. The period concludes and there it is. Wisconsin heading back to the national championship game where they will look to repeat the feat and try to become the first team to repeat as champions since Clarkson did it back in 2017 and 2018. But waiting for them will be the top seed in this tournament, number one, Ohio State.